All right, folks, we're working on 8200 today. The PTO clutch is slipping, not able to pull a feeder wagon. So we're tearing it apart. And what you do, you gotta take off this whole back assembly, which includes the three-point hitch, PTO down here, and not a lot to take off. Um, drain the oil, there's just a few lines and a plug-ins just in the back right here. I don't know if you can see it here. There's two lines here come off. Take off your lines for your three-point hitch on both sides. And more plug-ins over there. And the way it's looking to get these main bolts out here, we're going to have to take off this CV housing, which I got it loose. You have to take off this three-point center link. Take out your one bolt there. There's one more bolt hidden underneath there to stud. Take the nut off of that. Now this is loose, so we're going to jerk that off the top, just pull it straight up. And uh, then we'll take off these bolts here, and hopefully this thing will just slide straight out of here. Well, folks, we got a bunch of dirt back in there, and hopefully it won't plug up our outlets when we get done, but uh, we'll see once. Try to clean it up the best we can. If we can, try to clean up back behind there, but it's very hard to get to. So we took a chance, and it doesn't look good. So we created a vacuum bucket there, and then down to a small hose. We were able to suck out those holes and get the dirt and stuff out of them pretty, pretty nicely. Okay, we got the back end out here. As you see when you get up in there, those three bolts there hold that bearing on the back side of that PTO clutch. Now the fun part, both hydraulic pumps need to come off on both sides. There's one directly across from here, your filter. It's right up there on that stub there, where your filter would be at. Take off both pumps, the one on this side, right there. And then the next step is taking off this bottom shield, bottom plate right down in here, and up inside there, find two shafts. Barely can see them in there, but. That's what we're getting out to next. Okay, got that shield off. Got a bunch of dirt cleaned up out from underneath there. That shaft that we're looking at comes directly from the transmission. It's the bottom one. The top one is the drive gear that runs your pinion gear straight through there, running your differential. The bottom one spins all the time. That comes back here, that first gearbox that you're seeing there, the bolts around there, that's going to be the oil pump drive. Basically all that is is a gearbox, I can show you here, that spins the pump on both sides, so the oil pump on both sides here, and that's what drives that. Now one behind that, take, take the shaft off take that drive gear out and on behind that is where our clutch is at for the PTO okay we got the shaft out uh, just keep in mind that it's going to be full of oil so it's going to drain on top of you not careful we got our pump drive gear out keep in mind there's some shims right here don't want to lose those. They need to go right back in the exact same spot again. They were. You don't want to lose those shims. That's what it looks like up inside there. Um, next step is to get those two gears, 90 degree gears out. 
from both sides. Okay, you can see right here that we took a red marker and marked this pump drive um, nut on the outside there because when you turn that nut out, it'll turn out easy by hand. You want to count the rounds it makes. That way you know exactly how many rounds you need to go to put it back in. So it will be the exact same um, setting and you won't have your bearings too tight or too loose and cause other issues in the future. So count the rounds as you turn it out. That way, and mark it down so you can turn it back in the exact same amount. Okay, we got our pump drive gears out. Just for your information, ours was seven and a half turns on this side. This is the left side or the side of the step. On the right side, it was seven and a quarter turns out. Next step here, I'm going to remove the diagnostic plug. I'm not sure which one it is. It might be both of them. There's one right here, the one right back here, right above this solenoid there. Remove those to allow air to get in behind your pistons, your brake and your clutch pistons, so that they come out easier. Trying to get this clutch baffle out of there. It's causing a real pain. Um, I rigged this puller on there. I reversed the tines on it to go out. Let's see what happens. Okay, that worked really well. It came out really easy. Next step, take out these three bolts in there. As far as I know, I don't think this whole rear end would have to come off of here that we took off. I think if you got really long arms, you can probably reach it through the PTO hole. Now, I didn't fight that way through. I don't know if I could have reached it or not. Um, I'd say it'd be worth a shot to not have to do all this work here. But if you have big arms, you probably have to take it all off. Okay, after you get the back bolts loosened up, go ahead and come to this side again and jerk that whole clutch housing out of there. And then right back behind that is the PTO brake. I don't know. There, I got it. Remove that too. And then there's your piston. The brake piston right there. Here's the clutch assembly, the brake piston would ride right against the back. So you're going to have to inspect that real good, make sure it's not war. This one's not, it's all flat. That's where that back bearing would have bolted on to. There's three bolts in the back of the transmission. The next step is going to be tearing this apart. Going to have a snap ring in here. And these are going to slide out in pieces. Okay, got the clutches removed. And this was our problem. They are very shot. There's one that actually still has some pad on it. But a lot of them look like that. So, found the problem. Okay, we got all our new parts. We're ready to go back together with it. I'm still working on getting this piston out. Took out all the springs after the snap ring. There's a snap ring. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a ring right there. The snap ring goes into right above. All these springs are upside down right now. These are little ring springs. They look like oblong washers. You depress those springs down, take that snap ring off. Now the next part down there is the piston. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. Right over here, see that little bit of rubber? That piston failed, which is probably what caused this whole mess here. 
So we're gonna replace that piston, put all new clutch packs in. Hopefully that'll take care of the problem. Okay, we've got the old piston out. There's that bad part, the O-ring there. Got the new piston sitting in here. Keep in mind, let me pull that out. See how that flange is out, not in? Same way, and you can't see it. The inside seal is the same way. There you can kind of see it. Just make sure you lubricate those seals real well. We're going together here. Now those flanges go out, so you have to keep them from cutting on the steel, both the inside and the outside. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this pick, I'm gonna go around the edge with that pick as I push down, and I'm gonna keep that seal shoved tight in there. It's gonna be very hard to do because I have to do the inside one at the same time. So I'll be working in and out. I can't hold the camera and do it both, so I'm gonna put the camera down here and work that in there. Okay, it's in there. Uh, I noticed when we did it, the thing wanted to rock sideways on me real bad. The inside one was fine. We didn't have any problems there. As I got down toward the very last little bit of getting this outside one in, it wanted to curl up on the outside edge and I really had to fight it with that pick to get it in there. Um, but we got it. We had to tap it in with a hammer a little bit um, when I had the pick against it and it went in and everything slid in fine didn't twist anything um, it's set in there nice so now we're ready to put the spring back on and uh, get the packs in okay I got a set on the press there little homemade tool we built to depress that spring Leave that light for you and what you have to watch out for here remember I told you about that that uh, little notch in there where the snap ring goes in what can happen is these spring plates can slip inside that notch and get caught and then it's going to catch and go sideways on you and if you don't have a press it makes it a lot more difficult because then you end up pushing down one side and then the other side and it uh, can get really unfun but uh, we're going to go ahead and slip our snap ring on there get it ready to go then we're going to start pressing that spring in there. Okay, I caught. Somewhere I'm caught in that groove. So I had to back it up and start over. Okay, I got it. Took me several tries. You just gotta keep messing with it till you get it. Um, there's that snap ring hole. Now I can stick that snap ring in there and we'll be ready to go. All right, going back together. Got the, got the PTO clutch in, got the PTO clutch baffle in, and we got that pump gear in. Now that baffle is a very big pain in the neck. I, uh, I built this tool went over top of that shaft and I beat that thing in there it goes in very hard uh, trying to get it centered you'll fight it the whole way through um, but you might have to do something like I didn't build something or buy the the factory tool to do it 
there you go. Count the turns back in on these two gears. From this one here, it was seven and a half turns to that notch where I marked it. In the back, slide back there. Got those all tightened up. Uh, I put Loctite on them. They didn't have Loctite from factory, but uh, I like to be a little bit safe rather than sorry later on. So I just stuck some Loctite on them after I cleaned them up real good. That all went together pretty simply and easily. It was just that baffle that was a pain to get in there. All right, we got the pump drive gear in here. And remember these two plugs that go in these holes here um, you have to look in those holes to get a flashlight shine in that hole and this gear for your pump oh, let me get a light here make sure that is turned to where you can get uh, there's a slot there's there's slots and grooves in right inside that hole you have to make sure that's turned just so you can get that on now if you haven't marked it right you shouldn't have to worry about it, but just double check it to make sure uh, you don't run into trouble when you're putting that thing in there. What these are, they're little keepers that go straight in there, and they actually lock that ring, keep it from turning. That way those bearings stay tight. To hold this level, hooked on that center link, and a chain of the binder on the P or the <coughs> there. Up to the and we can level it, make sure we get it going on just perfectly straight. All right, we got it all done, except for the hitch back there. All back together, got the outlets back on, CV blocks and their new row rings everywhere. Um, all went together real simple and everything seems to be working fine. We run it and the PTO works good. Um, hope I covered all the bases for this video where you don't have to run into any complications like we did. But uh, yeah, good luck with yours.